Coming up, teaching aggressive dogs manners at Stan School of Canine Etiquette. Adapting from city life to working in the country, this guide dog's facing some new challenges. And raising his voice in song to help raise funds. needs a therapist, and quick. And who better to treat a dog than Stan, another dog? A 17th century castle overlooks the little town of Dunster in Somerset in southwest England. A few kilometers away is Hoe Farm, where Angela Stockdale keeps six sheep and nine dogs. One of them has a unique talent. For the past three and a half years, Stan has been teaching problem dogs good manners and how to behave with other dogs. Stan basically uses his own natural skills that he was born with, um, and he teaches other dogs canine etiquette. It's not just simply canine communication, it's how to be polite, how to settle arguments civilly. He teaches them how to understand other dogs, how to read what other dogs are saying, how being offensive actually achieves nothing. <laughs> Angela and Stan are partners in Stanley School of Canine Etiquette. Every month they hold workshops for aggressive dogs. The day begins with a progress report on returning dogs. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Angela. How are the two doing? How are the twins doing? He's much better in himself, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah, he's just so aggressive. He was so aggressive, and now it's much nicer. And I see not even bringing him here. It's just much, much better. Well, Uncle Stan will give him his next lesson on canine etiquette. Yeah, Stan gives much him lessons. Much to Holly's discuss. Yes. Uh, we brought Zeus here because he's got a, a problem with aggression towards other dogs. He's never been socialised properly um, when he was a pup. Um, his bestest little friend, Will, another Jack Russell, um, he got uh, a bit nasty with when we went on holiday in the summer. And it really brought it home to us that, you know, we've got to do something with his aggression. Before Stan is brought out, Zeus stretches his legs after his car trip. If he has got a problem with other dogs, there's only one animal that can help him sort that problem out, and that is another dog. Yeah. Once he knows how to communicate with other dogs, he will feel more comfortable about them and therefore yeah. become less aggressive. OK. okay? A muzzle is put on Zeus for Stan's protection. Hey, good luck. He's a good lad. He's a good lad. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Angela encourages Stan constantly. Stan remains cool and calm when faced with Zeus, the hothead. Stan's steely alpha dog stare isn't cutting it. So Angela brings in Mita and little Simon. Bad move, Zeus. Bad move. They are strength in numbers. He's a bit of a bully. But probably because initially he was worried. So he then learned how to deal with the fact he was worried by getting rid of other dogs. Now Stan came out on his own initially and wasn't confident in working him. Zeus is now acting totally differently and that's what you want to start with. But when push comes to shove and the other dog actually says, forget it mate, he's backing down, which is a really, really good sign. You're not a good boy. You're not a good boy. He's good. He's good. He's doing well. Well done, honey bug. Forget it, son. You're outnumbered. What, he's at, what Stan is actually saying to me here is, which is why he's wandering off and ignoring him, is basically, Mum, this boy's not ready to talk. OK? He's being very rude. He's being very offensive. I haven't been aggressive towards him. He's not ready to talk. So at this point in time, his, Zeus's first lesson is basically swearing at other dogs will not get rid of them. But there's a high chance that the next time you come to the workshop, he'll come into the same situation and he'll think, I can't get rid of them. Uh, well, maybe I ought to find out what their name is. OK, so really good news, really good news. Angela is pleased with Zeus's progress for this first visit. 
<laughs> the next patient Shiloh has seen Stan before, but he still seems to have a few aggression issues. Shiloh doesn't need a muzzle this time. He's not too sure. He's just working her out. But she hasn't charged at him like she, she had last time. No, she hasn't at all. See the way his head's going down? The way he turned his head away because she's not quite comfortable with him. And now he's saying, come on, darling, come and have a talk with me. I mean you no harm. Excellent. Stan is sizing up Shiloh. He pretends to ignore him. Totally different. Totally different. Stan uses his eyes and body language to communicate with Shiloh. He continually curves his body away from her. It's a non-threatening gesture. He's actually sort of saying to her, I'm not offensive. I'm not going to be offensive towards you. Now he's thinking. Fifteen minutes later, after many advances and retreats, Stan makes a breakthrough. Catch me if you can. Now she's got, he's got her. He's got her. Beautiful. He's won her over through subtlety. It looked like he was more or less ignoring her. He's been playing her all this time. Has she ever played with any other dogs like this before? Not with a, a new dog. So the fact that he's only, she's only met him twice, what do you think of that then? I think it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> After Stan's one-on-one -on -one sessions with various dogs, he does a group therapy session. When we've got a group situation, Stan doesn't go in and work each dog individually. He acts as a policeman. So it looks like he's doing nothing. But you'll see what he'll do is he'll stand on the outside, and if he needs to intervene, he will do. She's OK, she's OK. This is good for him, all right? She's um, just tremendous now. She gets on very well with other dogs, and uh, she's always been all right with people, but uh, particularly um, now, I'm, I'm very pleased with all the work that's been going on with Angela. And so when we took him out, he was really frightened and aggressive to anything, and this is our third time with Angela, and he is just a completely changed dog. We never thought we'd see this, and it's brilliant. I've never met a dog with such compassion, such an inborn need to resolve conflict, a dog that will avoid conflict at all costs and will resolve conflicts between other dogs. He doesn't start arguments, he settles them, and he teaches other dogs on how to settle them. Fudge is about to begin a new chapter in his life. His trainer is Karen Winter. Fudge is a yellow Labrador retriever. He's almost two years old, almost finished his training, and he's a very good candidate to become a guide dog. Meanwhile, on a farm hundreds of miles away, lives a 12-year-old boy, Jesse Whitney. Well, the time I get up is around quarter after 6, 6.30, and I go out, and then I milk the cow, and then I feed the calves, and then I throw it on the bale, and then I feed the sheep, and then I have to make sure everyone has water and food, and then I clean up the pigs, and then I go and have breakfast, and then around lunchtime, I come back out, and then I check everyone's water again. This training video shows one of the many tests Fudge has passed. Fudge is fine with cats. He's learned all of his obstacle training, okay? He has learned to stop at each street and how to cross properly. 
Uh, I've just finished doing blindfold work with the dog and he is very efficient. He's a very soft temperamented dog. He's very easy to manage, okay? He doesn't have a real hard head, so to say. He's not a stubborn dog like maybe the average Labrador would be. Very easy to manage and manipulate. And he's a very loving dog. He lives to please. Don't pick the weeds, we won't have cucumbers. Jesse was born with congenital glaucoma and then lost his remaining vision when a soccer ball hit him in the head and detached his retina. Surgery didn't help. Oh, he's going tomorrow. He's uh, headed to Montreal, go back to Mira, where he was last year for a week. They assessed him and, and okayed him for the dog, thought he was mature enough and he had a good sense of direction. And so he goes back now for a month. He's very excited. Yeah, he's very excited. We can't wait. <laughs> um, the youngest in the whole world to have a guide dog so it sort of makes me feel special because like no one else in the world under 12 has had a dog. I think I'm going to do it all right, but I'm still a little nervous. The Mira Foundation is the first and only organization in the world to provide guide dogs to children under 16. Eric St. Pierre is its founder. We are the first school in the world who, who give dogs and open, open everybody's mind. And we are, we are proud of that. Not only because we did it, because we improved the quality of living of blind people. Eric St. Pierre has no qualms about giving a guide dog to a child. I would say it's not harder to give the dogs to a kid than to give a dog to an adult. Uh, they ide idealize it, huh? so it's already there. So uh, the, the bounding, it's easy, very easy to do. Fudge and Jesse are halfway through their month of training. They're now inseparable. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Since they were matched, they've been together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When he hears me move my covers to get out of bed, he jumps up and he's... He jumps all over me and wags his tail and gives me kisses and just like to say, I missed you all night. It's not easy for Fudge. Before Jesse, he worked alone with his trainer, Karen. When both Jesse and Karen are on the scene, Fudge has to figure out who's boss. Fudge, I, I never. Good boy. He's looking from both sides. Okay, he knows that I'm still present. I'm still in the picture, okay? In a week or two, that will change, however. He'll know that uh, I'm no longer his master, that Jesse is his new master, and uh, he'll still listen to me if I say something, but let's say if we let the dog loose without a leash or a harness on him, he'll go to Jesse instead of me. At this point, he's in between. It's two weeks later and Fudge is still getting accustomed to Jesse. The training is hard work. We train about six or seven hours a day, and we train five days like that, and then three hours, four hours on Saturday. The dog works through step by step, okay? He's trained to stop at the curb, to cross the street uh, straight and safe. Uh, so it's all step by step, okay? Once the dog's bond has been fully created, that loving relationship between the two of them has been established, then the dog will, will work out of pure pleasure for Jesse. And at that point, uh, it will be wonderful for the two of them. Okay, done. I think that uh, Jesse and Fudge are a very good team. They're a very good match. Uh, Jesse's a, a young boy. He's very active. And Fudge, he, he is an active dog as well. And he loves to play. And they fit together like a glove. Farm life seems to agree with Fudge, aside from a few minor adjustments he's had to make over the last week and a half. I think Fudge. He's really good on the farm, but sometimes he thinks the animals are strange, and sometimes he seems a little bit nervous of the animals, and I think he's doing very well on the farm. Uh, having Fudge here is uh, 
has been great. He listens to Jesse very well, like nobody has to intervene. It's what I hoped it would be for, for Jesse. He's always been mature, but he, uh, it's almost a different tone to his voice. Like he knows he has to know what he's saying and he has to mean it with the dog. Fudge on, Teddy. Hi there, how are you doing? Good. That's good. The sidewalk's gonna angle to the left. Once Fudge has settled in, Karen visits for follow-up training. Together they go over the routes they'll take every day, like going home from school. It's really hard for a dog to adapt to farm life. He wasn't raised for this job. He was raised to be a guide dog working in town. He's here helping Jesse on the farm with all his chores, and he's working in school and in the downtown regions, guiding Jesse to perfection. So he's really adapting well to both sides of the life, and Jesse's doing really good, so I'm very, very happy. Yeah, that's really good, Jesse. He's, Fudge is doing really well. He's adapting good. He's a regular farm dog. Two dogs in one. At this time right now, I'm the youngest in the world to have a guide dog, and he lives to love me, and I live to love him. He's my, um, like a helping hand. He's my pal. <laughs> Around St. John's, Newfoundland, Rocky is a celebrity. Beautiful day, folks. Hi. Hey, hi. Hi. How you doing? I think I recognize your dog. Is that right? You folks yeah, see him on TV? Yeah, on TV with uh, Sharon Snow. And have a great evening, everyone, and we will see you again tomorrow. Take it away, Rocky. Rocky's no Pavarotti, but he's got a lot of soul. I think it definitely makes a difference. I mean, I've, I've witnessed it myself. I mean, like I said, where, where, he's, where him being on the air singing has helped, you know, again, it encourages people to, to get involved, to donate money, to donate their time. And the ultimate thing is, is when he gets, he's responsible for animals being adopted through either the public service announcement campaign or mostly he's singing, actually on the weather spots, it really, it really works. Damien has a regular gig at Greensleeves, a local pub. Tonight, for the first time ever, Rocky will sing along with him in his stage debut. Good boy, good boy. Come here. Good for a visit. Come on, babes. But first, Rocky will get in some practice during his rounds at the seniors' home. the uh, St. John Ambulance Therapy Dog Program uh, for seniors for probably approximately two years. Um, he does everything from provide companionship for these people and comfort uh, when they're feeling down and feeling sick. And of course, he provides good entertainment for them, too, with his singing abilities. So what do you think about Rocky singing at Greensleeves? Name is oh, I think that's wonderful. And it's his first time. Is it? I hope he won't yeah. stage struck. I hope not. <laughs> hope he doesn't drink too much, either. Oh. I have to keep him off the hard stuff, that's eh? That's right. I hope so, they don't have any cats in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> they won't like them. Before he came along, I wasn't doing much volunteer work. Um, he's helped me to, you know, to meet a lot of, you know, very interesting seniors at the at the seniors' homes. Um, some great people with the SPCA. Some great other uh, dog owners. I mean, people again who who do appreciate the little things in life and appreciate making a contribution to, to the world. And I've realized through having Rocky that making a contribution in the world doesn't necessarily mean being a successful, you know, person, whatever you're doing in, in your own job. It means, you know, really contributing to society in, in little ways. 
After running around Cape Spears to calm his nerves, Rocky heads back to town to tune up his pipes for his first public concert tonight. Rocky's debut is an SPCA fundraiser. Vi Vinton, who works at the shelter, is a huge fan of Rocky's. Well, Rocky has done several interviews uh, on NTV and has brought a lot of uh, awareness, public awareness, to the SPCA. And uh, through Rocky, uh, several animals have gotten new homes, all because people are watching and Rocky is there. Very nervous for Rocky, extremely nervous for Rocky. I never get nervous before performing, but this is nerve-wracking. <laughs> I hope he does okay. I think he's just a little bit weary about there's such a crowd of people here. He's not used to that. But he's doing fine. Is actually, he's a therapy doc for seniors, he visits uh, seniors at nursing homes, but uh, most importantly, he's a sort of a singing spokesman for the SPCA, and that's why he's here tonight. We're going to try to raise uh, some, uh, some money for the SPCA here, and now we got some uh, awareness pamphlets for uh, dogs and cats. So uh, he hasn't let me down before singing, so hopefully tonight he'll, he'll perform as usual. He's singing, I think he's thoroughly enjoying it, and I think he feels like the center of attention, which is fine with me. 